Hello everyone and welcome back. So today we're talking about failure. <laughs> Probably not something you want to hear about in your class, but still, we have to talk about failure nonetheless. So big things, what are different types of failure? When do they occur? What's the condition or situation that lead to failure? Like, you know, think Titanic, why did it fail? Think planes, like why did that rip off? Why did this break in half? And how can we understand how to keep our materials from failing? What can we do to keep them from failure? So we'll jump right into it. So the first type of failure we'll talk about is just simple fracture. It's the separation of a body into two or more pieces in response to a static stress. Now that's kind of happening here is there's gonna be a lot of cracks that accompany this failure. And there's two types of fracture. One is ductile, the other is brittle. Ductile is slow, brittle is rapid. Ductile has significant plastic deformation, little or no plastic deformation. Ductile fails with warning, brittle fails without warning. Which of those two do you think you want to see? I want ductile. I want ductile failure. That sounds good to me. Now, where would I see this? Well, let's look at the significant plastic deformation point and think about it this way. Why would we want significant plastic deformation? Well, maybe you remember, maybe you don't, but if we look at our stress strain curve, it looks something like this. And significant plastic deformation says that it fails way out here. And the area under the stress strain curve is the amount of energy that it's able to absorb. So think of it like a spring. It's a big spring. It's absorbing all the energy as it plastically deforms. If for some reason it fails earlier, it absorbs less energy which means that you get the rest of it. Think about your car. When you're driving your car and you ram into somebody, that bumper on the front is not meant to be super stiff and to resist it and not break at all. It's also not meant to break like glass. Um, it is meant to deform. It's meant to completely get bent out of shape, just like your engine block and everything else in the front of your car is meant to get completely bent out of shape so that you don't get completely bent out of shape. Um, for example, there's this car. It's one of my favorite cars. It's called the Stingray. Uh, it's a beautiful car, but it's got a fiberglass body, which means that when you hit something, it shatters, okay? It just cracks form like crazy, and it shatters. So it is not a safe car to drive by any way, shape, or form. Okay, so let's keep going here. So when we look at our fracture profiles, we're going to see three different profiles, and it's usually somewhere in the middle, something closer to that. If it's very ductile, like gold, then it's going to come down to a point when it fails. That's just saying that massive amounts of necking can happen before it finally fails. If it's very brittle, like glass, it's going to be almost a flat surface when it breaks. And if it's somewhere in the middle, like very iron, if it's been properly worked, then it's going to have what's called a cup cone feature where it'll have some necking and then it'll have a flat bottom or sometimes it'll be a cave here and then a cup here. So this is the moderately ductile fracture here. It's the cup cone I was talking about where you have some necking and then it breaks. And then we have the very, very brittle fracture where these are totally flat surfaces where it breaks. This broke suddenly. This one, you had a little bit of a idea that it was happening because that necking began before that. You can see there was actually fairly a significant amount of necking, so if you were watching for it, the person might be able to see it and say, whoa, 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 slow down, you're putting too much force, I can see it's beginning to stretch there. You know, you can maybe get out of the way in time. This one, it was sudden. You can't get out of the way in time. So, let's look at this. So for ductile fracture, if we look at the fracture of this pipe, you can see that, yes, it failed, as this whole big bent in there and it began to crack along that edge. However, it's still just one piece. There's a huge deformation on either side, but that pipe is still together. If it broke near you, okay, maybe you got doused with water and hopefully it wasn't hot water, um, but the pipe didn't send shards of metal into your eyes. On the other hand, a brittle fracture, like let's say that fiberglass car I was talking about, look at all these very, very sharp pieces that got shot out from this explosion. This is not safe. 
This can lead to a lot of damage, lacerations, and possibly death. This ductal fracture, it can still lead to death. Like you could, somebody still could get injured from that. But it is much safer for it to fail in a ductal way than in a brittle way. Okay, so that's it for this time. Thank you for listening. And next time we'll continue to jump into different ways of fracture and failure. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.